I've spent the last week and a half, maybe two weeks, binge watching all 48 episodes of Crimes That Shook Britain and my biggest takeaway is that I'm absolutely devastated that there hasn't been a new series since 2007. I am completely addicted to this. And there are two main reasons for that, maybe three reasons. The first one is that it's British. There are so many amazing American crime series, but there are not that many comparatively that are based on British crimes or ones that are quite as extensive as crimes that shook Britain. So it was amazing to get stuck into 48 episodes. Each episode's between kind of 45 and 55 minutes. So let's say rounding up to 48 hours of British crime. Completely immersive and absolutely loved it. The second reason I thoroughly enjoyed this is I think they're actually very well presented. Each episode is a little mini documentary in its own and the stories are told very effectively. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. And the third reason I love it is that it taught me quite a lot. There were a lot of things in this. Despite the fact that I eat, sleep and breathe true crime and crime fiction, I am a crime fiction writer, there are still things that I could learn from this. And there were some stories that were that I hadn't heard of that were very, very shocking. And honestly, they chilled me. They thrilled me, but they chilled me. So I will... Further down this discussion, I will mention some specific episodes. In fact, I'll probably name every episode to give you an overview of the kind of content that you can expect. But I won't do that until near the end, so I don't spoil anything if you want to go in like I did with no expectations for what exactly to expect. I will say, however, that the majority of these are about murders. Some of them are mass murders, some of them are serial killers, some is just one brutal murder of an individual, occasionally a child. Um, there is one, maybe more than one, where it didn't end in murder. There's definitely at least one. And obviously my favourite true crime stories are those about murders. And that sounds disgusting and sick and twisted, but, you know, they're the ones that are the most fascinating. As humans, we find that fascinating. And that's definitely what's presented here. So the method in which they're presented is a pretty traditional approach to documentaries. We have interviews with people who were affected. So for the most part, these are relatives, friends, colleagues. Obviously, the people who are deceased cannot say anything. And we have, where available, we have CCTV footage, um, either of the days leading up to it or of the crime itself, where possible. Uh, it's done tastefully. It's not... It's not the most graphic documentary that I've seen. It's It doesn't sugarcoat things. But if you're squeamish, I think for the most part you'd be okay. It doesn't really go into kind of too much graphic detail, which is a bit of a shame in some ways. Uh, um, and there, there are some reconstructions and it's all kind of nicely woven together. Some of the later seasons series... Um, see, I'm so used to talking about American true crime series that it's seasons series are actually presented by Dermot Monaghan rather than just being narrated and I kind of don't like that because I feel like it's a waste of visual like instead of seeing him visually for a couple of seconds every 10 minutes or so I'd rather those seconds were used as a voiceover on an image that's more shocking or effective but it's a minor complaint, did not really detract from anything that I liked about this. So, I'm going to, um, also I should point out, it's narrated by Tom Roberts, um, and Murnahan presented it from, I think, six onwards. And I'm going to quickly whiz through a couple of the episodes that really stood out for me to kind of give you an overview of the kind of things that you'll face. <laughs> Oh, something fell off the table. Also, I really just want to talk about these because I'm ridiculously excited. So these are... Well, I find it quite weird, actually, because when I was watching them, I was watching them on Amazon Prime, and it's actually in a slightly different order, and not all of the episodes are exactly the same. There are a couple that are not listed here on Wikipedia, but a couple that are on here that weren't there. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It was originally broadcast. There are other versions of it. But for the most part, this is um, what we see is what we get. So there's 
oh, there's the Hungerford Massacre where Michael Ryan shot dead 16 people and went on this rampage. Absolutely terrifying stuff. There's a section, there's one on Harold Shipman, which is very, very interesting. Obviously, it looks at the murder of young Sarah Payne. The London nail bombings. I hadn't heard of them. And that was terrifying. And really, really shook me, that one. Really looked at the Dunblane Massacre. That episode was amazing. Because like every British person, I'm aware of the Dunblane Massacre. I didn't know the specifics. I had no idea that Hamilton was that old. I thought he was, like, much younger. Very, very disturbing stuff. Um, there's one of the murder of Rhys Jones, which is a young 11-year-old boy died for no reason, literally no reason, and it's painful. The murder of Victoria Columbia is quite terrifying. Um, I, I don't want to talk about any of these in too much detail because I want you to watch them and enjoy it, but Columbia I'll talk about briefly. Basically, she moved from the Ivory Coast to England with an aunt who pretended to take her over to send her to a good school. She was actually supposed to be going to France. But she came over here and her aunt abused her um, severely. And it's such an emotional episode. Uh, looks at Jamie Bulger. Um, Raoul Moat, of course, Raoul Moat was... I think Raoul Moat's probably one of the more recent ones here. Most of them... Yorkshire Ripper, of course. A lot of them are much older. Um, Jimmy Savile, Lee Rigby, Fred and Rose West, uh, the Philpots, the Marchioness disaster, um, which is the boat on the Thames that capsized. Um, Rolf Harris, Angus Sinclair, that one, Edinburgh really oh i've read a lot about that one and it was it was great the way the documentary presented it but it always irritates me that case so much um peter tobin very famous case the manchester arena bombings that's probably the most recent one actually um stepping hill hospital murders and quite a few more so yes it's a mixed bag and that's what i love is that every episode felt different. They were all done with respect. And they were all done with balance, as far as possible. Once somebody's been convicted, it's kind of, you have a side and you take it. But they were done with balance for the most part. And I absolutely love this documentary. So if I can have one thing in my life, it's that we get another series of this. Okay, there are more things I want in my life, but I would love another series of Crimes That Shook Britain because it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Apparently, according to Wikipedia, it was rebroadcast between 2014 and 2019 in a completely random order on Channel 5 under the title Britain's Worst Crimes. So when you, if you do go on to Crime and Investigation on Amazon, which I strongly suggest you do, if you're into, into true crime, which if you're listening eight minutes into this video, I assume you are, then just bear in mind that the episodes are not necessarily the order that they say they are. But I do thoroughly recommend it. It's one of the best series I've ever seen and I desperately need more. <laughs>